The full card for Misfit 16 was released a few days ago, and I like a lot of the matchups on offer. Misfit 16 will take place in Miami, Florida. This tells me that they are still attempting to shop the Misfits boxing brand around to other markets besides the UK. I applaud them for keeping at it and still trying to crack the American market, especially after some disastrous events that were set there, namely Misfits 8 and Misfits 13. That being said, I feel like a Brazil card would be fantastic later down the line, and the Misfits team should explore foreign territories rather than trying to get another United States card off the ground. Regardless, let's Let's go through the entire Misfits 16 card and give it a preview. Please like and subscribe for the most comprehensive Misfits card breakdowns on YouTube and also daily combat sports content. I've been wanting to hit 100,000 subscribers since I was a little kid making video game let's plays, so if you could subscribe today that would really mean a lot. With that said, we're going to start from the bottom of the card all the way to the main event. The opening fight is Amir Cashman Anderson's debut against a currently unknown opponent. Now I didn't know who this guy was until I looked him up, but Amir Anderson is an established amateur boxer from America with several accomplishments to his name. He's a 10 time national champion, international gold medalist, etc. With Misfits adding boxing prospect Amir Anderson to the card for his pro debut, they are directly competing with most valuable promotions, Jake Paul's company. Jake's whole idea with MVP is to sign emerging boxing talent and give them a platform to display their ability, build their careers, and records. Mems and the team over at Misfits probably saw the approach MVP was taking and felt they could compete by bringing young boxing talent onto their shows. I mean, MVP, Nikisa, and Jake Paul have slated Misfits, and on multiple occasions have labelled their product fake or pretend influencer boxing. But having a boxer with real amateur experience open the show nullifies that criticism. I think including Amir Anderson on Misfits 16 was a brilliant move, and putting him as the first fight of the night was smart as well. Just like with all boxers making their pro debuts, Amir will probably go up against the journeyman that he can bowl over in a round. The Cashman will most likely produce a flashy knockout, and that is a great way to start a show and get the fans pumped for more Misfits action. This right here is how you include professional boxers on Misfits. You don't chuck pros in there with average influencer boxers, you treat the professionals as professionals. I hope that Misfits sign more pro boxers wanting to start off their careers, without going overboard and forgetting why people tune in to Misfits Boxing to begin with, the influencers and the crossover elements of the product. Having a real traditional boxer start the event off with a knockout win and then the rest of the card being influencer focused is Misfits way of having their cake and eating it too. Again, it's a very smart move by Mams and the rest of the team. Leah Gotti vs Amber Fields is next down the line and I have no clue who these women are to be honest. Okay, well after being newly acquainted with both of these ladies, I'm still not interested to see them fight. I'm sure there is some weird group out there on the internet that are clamouring for Aaliyah Gotti vs Amber Fields bouts, but not me unfortunately. I don't know about this one man. It seems like Amber is a ring girl for Misfits, so she's probably taken a boxing class or punched a bag before. I think she's going to win based on that fact alone. That being said, during my research on Leah, it looks like she has taken big shots to the face before, so who knows. Moving on, we have Samuel Erickson vs OJ Rose. Now apparently Samuel Erickson is this viral karate specialist who has competed on those karate combat shows. I'm not too clued up on who this guy is. I mean, he seems to have a big audience on social media, but OJ Rose is a different beast and will beat Samuel Erickson. OJ Rose is one of the most talented fighters on Misfits and has gone up against a row of killers in this scene at least. I mean, he fought Gabe Silver in his fourth ever fight. I don't think OJ Rose will be intimidated by whatever Samuel Erickson is planning to bring to the table. Sam might have some more striking experience, but I have a feeling OJ Rose is going to stop him. Two fights that are a part of the Misfits lightweight tournament will be on Misfits 16 with Lead Sharks vs. Ace Musa and Yoni Gang TV vs. Argentinian King. Now, Waleed and Ace Musa were supposed to fight all the way back during Misfits 5, but the latter had to drop out due to failing medical tests. 
It appears like this problem has been straightened out, as Ace Musa is able to fight Waleed Sharks on Misfit 16 instead. Waleed Sharks will be the heavy favourite coming into this fight, and I back him to beat Ace Musa as well. The truth is that Waleed has been in there with some of the toughest names in the lightweight division under the brightest lights. Whereas, from what I can gather, this will be Ace Musa's first boxing fight on such a massive stage. It seems like Ace Musa has some boxing experience under these local influencer promotions, but Waleed will be too much for him. As for Yadi Yang vs Argentinian King, I see Yadi Yang getting a comfortable win here. Argentinian King had a very controversial decision victory in his last Misfits event against Pali Arif. He's already been pushed by lesser opposition, so I think that this time around, Yadi Yang will be too skillful for him. Finally, we have the main event of the card, FaZe Temper vs Josh Bruckner. This is a really good matchup, as there's a lot on the line here. FaZe Temper won his last fight against Ginty, but everyone knew that he was going to win that fight, and Josh Bruckner is a legitimate test for Temper. He still has more to prove after losing to KSI in such a devastating way. If Temper beats Josh Bruckner, he gets right back into the mix of top Misfits fighters in my opinion. I mean, Josh Bruckner is Salt Poppy's signature win, and it's the fight that people look at when trying to say that Salt Poppy is one of the best Misfits fighters. Speaking of Salt Poppy, when he knocked out Josh Bruckner, the latter hasn't been back to Misfits since, and I'm sure he's itching to get back into the win column. Temper vs Bruckner is a fight for proper redemption, and it's very worthy of being a Misfits main event especially on a free card. I believe Mems Taylor and the Sowland brothers learned a lot from Misfits 13 by not entrusting the main event spot to unproven fighters. So Temper vs Josh Bruckner makes a lot of sense from that perspective as well. Josh has been around since KSI vs Logan Paul 2 fighting on the undercard, and Temper has always shown up and performed as well, win or lose. I mean, when Dylan Dennis pulled out of Misfits 4 last minute, who was the one that saved the event? Phase Temper. So this fight between Temper and Josh is fairly even. Temper has a fairly suspect chin and has looked very hittable in the past, but so has Josh Bruckner. Both have had high and low points in their boxing careers, and both are coming to make an absolute statement. If I had to put money on it, I believe Temper is going to win. While Josh Bruckner looks like more of a textbook boxer, Temper in his fight against Ginty in particular showed off some explosiveness that I believe Josh lacks. If Temper can use that controlled aggression against Josh, I think he could finish him, but this fight is really a toss up. It can legitimately go either way, and both guys can be on the receiving end of a knockout in this main event. Misfit 16 is shaping up to be one of the better cards they've put on. If you're looking at Misfit 16 through the eyes of it being a non-pay-per-view event as well, it's pretty fucking good. I feel like it's missing maybe one more really solid fight to cap it off, but what we got so far is decent. You have a fantastic non-pay-per-view level main event, you have two very high level lightweight fights, and of course the potential of a spectacular knockout by a debut pro boxer.